Hey now, Greg Fitzsimmons here. Who did you expect? Andy Kindler, who once actually took over my podcast or my radio. I used to do a radio show on Sirius XM for about a decade on Stern's channel. And the studio was on the other side of Hollywood and it was a fucking pain in the ass to get there. And one time I showed up and I was so late that Andy Kindler had to start because it was live. It went live. We'll do it live. It went live at five o'clock. It's a rush hour. So Kindler had to do 10 minutes waiting for me to get there. And he shit all over my existence. Talked about what a fucking unorganized ex drunk Irishman who can't handle responsibility. It was hilarious. Serious. Didn't find it as hilarious. But I'm listening to him on my radio as I'm driving to my own show that I'm missing. So, uh, yeah, Kindler. We should have Kindler back. So he's divisive. Some people love him. Some people hate him. By the way, Feldman. Holy shit. David Feldman was on last week. If you missed that, go back and listen. I got more comments on social media and emails to my website. People fucking love David Feldman. He's just the best. He's just a smart, funny guy, and I click with him. It makes me miss the East Coast because I walk on eggshells in L.A. I never know what the fuck to say. I always go over the line, and I can't remember ever stepping over the line in New York. Used to bust people's balls, call Patrice. I won't even tell you what I used to call Patrice. Fucking craziness. And it was all funny. And out here, oh, God. I, I was, I did, we do yoga on the beach. It's Sunday when I'm recording this. And we do, my wife and I do yoga on the beach at uh, nine in the morning. And we're out there and it's, and it's amazing because you're, we're not on the sand, but there's a little patch of grass right near the beach. And we're out there and, uh, you know, it's, start, it's starting to warm up. And you just feel so thankful that you've got this big open space and it's just free and it's flowing and it's other people around lifting weights, riding bikes, walking dogs, playing with babies. And it's just life affirming. And it's just a great way to start the day. And then and this happens. And then this homeless guy comes by this morning. And and I mean a homeless like he's got the full look. It's like it's like a set a costume designer had put together his outfit. No, you know, no shoelaces, of course, no mask and just, you know, layers of dirt. And he's nuts. And so now we're fa- and, and he just starts yelling at us. And there's like 15 people and he's going, cocksuckers, look at you cocksuckers. Hey, hey, you want me to suck your tits for you? Sounded like a Boston accent, like he'd made his way out to L.A. And uh, and and nobody knew what to say because you've confronted the west side of L.A. liberal mindset was, you know, fa- face to face with the homeless that we pretend or not pretend we do care about them. But now he's interrupting the fucking flow of my vinyasa. And who knows, he might steal your Uggs. And so now the snowflakes are kind of like stuck. It was, and then, and then so, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to get, I'm going to fucking punch this guy in the face because he wouldn't leave. And, uh, and I didn't know what to do. And I thought that's not very yoga ish. And then this woman goes, uh, just this little Asian woman. She goes, excuse me. And I'm like, oh, that's fucking great. And guess what? It worked. The guy fucking left. That's all it took. That's all it took was one person to just say, excuse me. Where are your manners, sir? Like he wasn't really clear that this was not the way to act. And he was ashamed about asking to suck their tits. Can I let me suck your tits for you like they're cows? He said it like he was doing them a favor. Hey, you want me to release your your uh, lactation? Ladies, so that's how I started my day. 
And then I went home and I just read the goddamn Sunday time. I usually usually on Sundays I just watch football nonstop all day. But it's an off week. It's the week between the playoffs and the Super Bowl, so having a little bit of football withdrawal. But I get the Sunday New York Times delivered every week and I don't always get through it. And today I got through it. Just uh came home drank a couple cups of coffee and got through it. Boy, if you if you don't hate the Mets enough, there's this whole story about GameStop, and uh, I'm sure everybody knows about what happened this week, about a bunch of people on, there's a Robinhood is the name of this app that allows you to buy stock, but allows the common man to buy stocks. It's for people that, there's no fees. So people just get on, and I mean, my son's friends are using it, and they day trade, and it's so fucking stupid. But anyway, they on Reddit, they started telling people to go on and buy stocks that were being shorted. And the really simple way to explain this is, you're betting the stocks go down. But if a lot of people buy the stock, it goes up. And so it costs these companies billions of dollars. Because when you short, you're forced to actually sell sell the stock at what you it's complicated anyway turns out like the owner of the Mets this guy Steve Cohen that people fucking hate he's the new owner of the Mets and he's a multi-billionaire so this guy um gave like a billion dollars uh to basically the big money got got the the stock market to make it so you couldn't buy and sell that you could sell, but you couldn't buy. Fuck it. I'm not going to talk about this. The Mets suck. The owner sucks. So the Super Bowl is next week, and I asked my friends if they wanted to do boxes. And I don't know if you know how that works, but you you have a grid of 100 boxes. And you put numbers across horizontally and vertically, randomly. You pick it from a hat, 1 through 10, what order they go in. And before you pick the numbers, everybody puts their initials in different boxes. And it's, for this, it's 5 bucks a box. And so you the, the winners get paid off. And uh, so I did it, and it was like such a... I thought, this will be fun. This will be easy. What a fucking pain in the ass. Because I got people sending their friends to send me emails, and I don't know their phone numbers because I have to obviously set up like a text chain to uh, so people know what their numbers are. And I'm chasing down numbers, and then I realize, like, what am I doing? This is a lose-lose because if I win, it looks really bad because I'm the guy that set up the boxes. I can't win, so why am I doing it? If I lose, I fucking lose money. It's like... It reminded me of, in high school, I used to throw parties a lot because we had this basement that was really unfinished. And it had cracked tiles, and but it had a pool table. And my parents, for some reason, didn't give a fuck. We used to have, ready for this? Three kegs, half kegs of beer. And my parents said we could have one, but then we'd hide two in the woods and we'd keep swapping them out. And fuck, 150 kids from town would show up and they would destroy the house. And I, I don't know why I kept having parties. And guess what? You don't get laid at your own party. Never happens. Because you're making sure that nobody is stealing pool balls or scratching the records. Records, that's right. It was a long time ago. Or going upstairs uh, or whatever. You're not relaxed. You're not having fun. You can't get too shit-faced. What's the fucking point? It's a lose-lose. It's like it's like when you're I've talked to people that work in restaurants and they say being the manager everybody thinks that's a big deal you become you know you start off as a as a as a hostess and then you become a waitress and then they promote you to manager and every manager goes I made more money waiting tables I worked less hours and if something went wrong it wasn't my fault Why do you want to be the manager be in the middle I've been saying this for years. I've been in the middle of show business for many years. Never made it to the top, but always made it way past the bottom. Nice living, comfortable, stay busy, get to be creative, but I'm never the guy. Not never. I've been a showrunner a few times, and it fucking sucked. 
you got to hire everybody, which means you're not hiring people that then get mad at you because they're your friends. And then you're the first guy at work. You're the last one to leave. You got to remember a million fucking things. Sucks. The middle. The middle. Whatever you do for a living, don't try too hard. I've been thinking deep lately. Sitting in my hot tub last night in the backyard. I'm looking up. And we got these really skinny palm trees that go up about 120 feet in the air. They're fucking huge. And they sway in the wind with the leaves up top. And I just lay back and I look up at that. And I can see the moon and I can see the stars. And I kind of had an epiphany about looking at those stars and realizing that's not the end. It's infinity is the end. There is no end to anything. And this whole thing that we're fed about, you know, shoot for the stars. Maybe you'll end up, shoot for the stars, maybe you'll end up on the moon. Well, the moon's not the end either. Now you're at the fucking moon. And, and, it, and it, this, this mentality of goals, being so goal-oriented, every self-help, Western thinking fucking, just pick a goal and then you reach it. Pick a number of goals, keep hitting your goals, fuck goals. It's not about goals. That's a false narrative. It's about process because you're going to do it forever. Your life is forever because when you die, something else happens. Even if you don't believe that, say you don't believe in the afterlife, your life is still forever because when it ends, you're not conscious anymore that it ended. So get, get used to being in process and not goal. Just, it just makes you put, just meditate, you know? Don't worry about, am I happy with my achievements? You know, be happy that you're, you're yourself. Be happy that you've made good friends, that you've made a life. Sit. Don't move all the time. Just sit still. Be, be brave enough to be vulnerable. And don't worry so much about shutting down your feelings so you can grind through. I'm so sick of fucking looking at TikTok and there's always some 29-year-old dude who's good-looking telling me that I should fucking... To take a plunge, a cold plunge in the morning and then train for a triathlon so that I can be a man. You're a fucking zero, pal. You know, you do a try and then fu- and then get funding for your startup. I don't want a fucking startup. Who wants a startup? I want to I want to enjoy the moment. Read fucking Power of Now and learn to meditate. It's my message for today. So, speaking of which, if you are feeling down, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling anxious, if you're not comfortable in your own skin, you may need some assistance. And that's why I want to tell you about this company called BetterHelp Online Counseling. Um, You know, your life is, it's up to you to invest in it. And uh, just, Know that there's people out there that can help you come up with strategies that will get you where you want to go. Um, BetterHelp Online offers online licensed professional therapists who are trained to listen and help with issues including trauma, anger, grief. It's intent. Look, it's very hard to find a therapist. I tried it recently and it was a pain in the ass. Takes forever. With this, you fill out a questionnaire. They assess your specific needs, and they match you with a counselor in less than two days. Easily schedule secure video or phone sessions. Uh, Unlimited messages with the therapist. You can text your therapist. If you're unhappy, you can switch. Don't worry about it. Join the million-plus people who have used BetterHelp to find a counselor. BetterHelp is a convenient and affordable option, and our listeners get 10% off your first month with the discount code FITSDAW. Get started today at betterhelp.com slash F-I-T-Z-D-O-G. No shame in asking for help, people. Do it. Do it. 
All right, let's get to a couple letters you guys have sent in. I love hearing from you. Again, it's Fitzdog. Uh, com is the website. You can email me from that or go to fitzdogradio at gmail.com and uh, directly uh, do it from there. So, um, all right, who is written in this week? I got, uh, I got a letter. Somebody concerned. I'm writing to you about a somewhat serious topic. My wife and I watched some episodes of Sunday Papers recently, and we noticed your head is shaking, nodding a lot. I'm not trying to alarm you, and maybe this is just a side effect of your medication you're taking that could be adjusted. Maybe it's something you're already aware of, and it's none of my business. I just thought I'd point it out in case you weren't aware so you could mention it to your doctor. Todd, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, I am a little bit uh, jumpy. I'm jumpy. I'm not sure. I think it's a combination of I don't take my Ritalin before I do podcasts because— I feel a little disconnected when I'm on it. It's a little it's a little bit disconnecting. I do drink a lot of coffee, but it's also because I have ADD and one of the subconscious strategies I've had is that I keep moving. It keeps my energy up. It lets me continue connecting. And uh when I'm not doing a pod, if I'm in a writers room, I get the same thing. People are like, "Dude, calm your fucking leg down." But it's how I motor through. Jeff says, yo, grapefruit, have you heard about emerging research showing that melatonin, which I take, inhibits testosterone levels in men? My melatonin use has increased dramatically since the pandemic started because of increased anxiety. I've noticed that lately my boners haven't been as strong and my cum doesn't fly as far when I beat off. Well, Jeff, that is an issue. Because I know you're probably having contests with your friends, long cum shot contests. I don't know. I Jeff, I don't know why you need to come far. I, those days are over for me. I used to I used to need a fucking handkerchief around my neck. I the tissues, tissues used to go up on my nipples, middle of my chest. Now Right at the bottom of the shaft. That's where it goes. There's no... It's like a shot... It used to be a javelin throw. Now it's a shot put. Okay. Let's do some nicknames. Uh, I don't know how this started, but uh, I started asking people to send me their nicknames because I found them to be... Many of them to be funny. This guy says... uh, His name is Chris. He says, My fraternity brothers were absolutely brutal when coming up with nicknames. This... That immediately frightened me. Here are a few. Drop 10. Girl that would have been hot if she lost 10 pounds. Well, if she lost 10 pounds, Chris, you probably wouldn't have had a shot at her. Maybe you should just be fucking happy she put on the freshman 10, freshman 15. This one is uh, Dumb Jen and Dumb Jen 2 was another nickname. I guess they knew two women named Jen that were dumb. Hmm. Wonder where they are today. And finally, Cocksnatcher. She had a penchant penchant for grabbing guys' crotches. Now, she sounds like a little bit of fun. Cocksnatcher, that's a girl you want at the party. That's a girl that's like, hey, guys, did you get the uh, Jell-O for the Jell-O shots? Okay, what about the, uh, you got the, the cups, red plastic cups? Okay, good. What about Cock Snatcher? Anybody call Cock Snatcher? You didn't call Cock Snatcher? Dude, we, why are we having this party? Finally, BC says, uh, in high school, uh, my friends and I volunteered once a summer at a local overnight camp for special needs kids. That's very nice for their big charity event. We all ran a station meant to have fun with the campers. I was running the kickball game station and felt a general lack of excitement from the campers. So I told my buddy to slow roll me a pitch, and I clobbered a home run. I was going nuts, trying to get the campers into the game. A local Philly news reporter was there covering the event and saw the kick and gave me a high five and was complimenting me left and right. Unbeknownst to me, He thought I was a camper. And the nickname Mongo was born. 
That is fucking hilarious. I hope to God he took a photo and put it in the paper. That would be amazing. I mean, that is the thing, is you you can jump in one of those games and be a hero. I don't know if I told you guys the story. I think I probably have a few times. I played touch football. I volunteer with the Best Buddies, which is for people with special, uh, with intellectual disabilities. And we were doing an event in Boston that they flew me in for, and it was this celebrity football game. I know I'm not a celebrity, but I am. Maybe in Boston I am. You don't know. So they split us up with the best buddies to play against each other, and I'm on Tom Brady's team, and I'm hanging out with him, having some laughs. And then uh, we're playing the game, and I go out for a pass, I, I look over my shoulder, running up the sideline. I see Tom Brady's eyes lock in with mine, and he fucking takes a ball from behind his ear and launches a perfect spiral and just basket catch over my shoulder. I'm thinking, I got to pull this in. Don't fucking drop this ball. And my fingers became soft like dough, like bread dough, and I yanked it in, held it to my chest, deked out one of the best buddies, ran for a touchdown. How did I feel? Fucking great. That's right. That's right. Okay, so the defense wasn't that strong. All right, let's get to it. Oh, uh, we have overheards. Should we do the overheards? Oh, we did binging. Also, I asked people I was quarantining. People sent in their binging suggestions. Mr. Chris says, an amazing show to watch is uh, Too Old to Die Young on Amazon Prime. Ten episodes by Nicholas Winding Refn. He had previously directed Drive with Ryan Gosling. Yeah, Ryan Gosling, I remember that. He was to Toothpick McGillicuddy. D does Ryan Gosling's toothpick get credited as an actor in the movies he does? I'm, I'm sick of the guys with the fucking perfectly high cheekbones and the five o'clock shadow and the toothpick dangling to make them look like they're tough guys. Stop it. Kathleen Moore says, Peep Show. Loved it. Comes off weird. I'd stick with a few episodes before you quit. Saw it because of her and about 12 other people suggested it. It's really fucking cool. It's a British show, which bothers me. Not a fan of the Brits. But they, uh, they shoot it from the point of view of a character, and then they change characters. So it's literally the camera is shot as if it's the vision of the person and the and there's a narrative of there's a voiceover of exactly what uh, stream of consciousness would be in that person's head. It's interesting. It's funny. Um, and then let's do one overheard. David Barrett sitting at the airport, stereotypical old couple. He says. It says we're boarding right now. She says, just stop it. I can see it right there. They are not boarding yet. That's fucking great. All right, let's get to it. Uh, my guest this week is a very old dear friend who uh, we did our first, we had our first uh, TV credits together. We did comedy on the road on A&E. Uh, back in 1995, 96, we'd never been on TV before, and uh, we've been friends ever since. Anyway, uh, we had an interesting talk. I think you'll like it because we have a bunch of laughs, but we also get into some corona talk and some talk about society in general, and Jim's take on it is very different than mine which i appreciated because although i don't agree with him i think it's important to hear all angles on topics and to maybe try to uh impart information to each other points of view and um you know he's been going pretty deep he was down a q on rabbit hole and um i don't think he's an anti-masker but he's he's there's a couple conspiracy theories he's been kicking around in his head and we get into it. So I hope you enjoy it. My buddy, uh, Jim Brewer. J 
Jim Brewer is joining me. He's settling into his, uh, looks like he lives in an arboretum. He's got fucking plants <laughs> all over. He looked like, uh, what was the guy in laughing? They used to pop up behind a plant. Oh my God. Yeah. They get, Artie, uh, Artie something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Look at this. See, this is. Oh, wait, I, I lost just, you. I lost yeah, you. no, that's me. I'm a dummy. Right. Look at what I just did. Hold on. Here we go. There you're God. back. All right. All right. <sighs> What's going on? We uh we were scheduled for a half hour ago, and then you had some drama in your house, and you had to push this off for a little bit. What's going on over there? I gotta. You gotta remember, Greg. I got all women in the house. Yep. I have two of them are not in the house, so they're calling. So I got sixteen year old in the basement. I got a twenty one year old and eighteen year old. We're all completely different worlds and beliefs. The 21 year old is trying to figure out financial aid. Cause I already, we already, she already dropped the ball the first round. Like, Oh yeah, we'll pay for college. Yeah. And then, you know, of course it's, Hey, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah college is done. <laughs> college is done. She drank her the money. College after yeah. how many years? Uh, she was going into her senior year. Done. Shows over. No, shit. no, I take that back. Really? Yeah, no, I, I take it back. Junior year, junior year. Wow, it's it's a school. I need to change. All right, we got to change. <laughs> it got worse. <laughs> Had to pay for a lease for a year. It was uh -huh. great. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Uh, so anyway, before I, th th the main distraction was. Uh, yeah, all I hear in the background is my wife going, Hey, watch your mouth. I don't care how old you are. You don't talk. You sound like a, you sound like a white trash. You don't speak. Do you speak like that? To so I'm listening to that. going, this is, this is just going to keep elevating. Yeah. Uh, so she's like, all right, I'm on a computer. What exactly do you want me to do? Okay. I'm look. I'm looking. So this is all I'm hearing. <laughs> Wait, this then, is which, which one? Is this the girl that dropped out of college she's talking to? Yeah, but now she's going back, but yeah. on her own. Okay, got it. All right. She pays for everything. Yeah, now. there you go. Um, so she got filled all these papers. So she needs mom to sign something. So mom's on a computer trying to fix it. Me and mom are dumb as rocks when it comes to technology. Dumb as rocks. Yeah. Uh, so she goes, this is all I hear. You know what? I don't need this. Jim, you need to talk to your daughter about her attitude and her mouth. They don't talk to you. I said, all right, all right. What, 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 what's this happen? Yeah. She's giving me the code and I'm trying to repeat it. And I said, is that a capital letter? And she goes, no mom or else i would have said capital so i was like you know what i don't need your snarky crap and hung up on her so now dude. people think when your kid hits 18 you're done parenting people go oh yeah because my daughter i got a son in college i got a daughter who's a senior in high school and people go, you're almost an empty nester. You're almost done. And then I talk to people like you and you realize the shit doesn't end for a long time. It never ends. Yeah. It never ends. So, so then she calls, dad, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to talk mom off a ledge. Dad, I just need, you know what? She's seven years old and she hasn't got over trauma since she's eight. She took therapy for like a semester. So she knows all about <laughs> psychology, uh, psychology now. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. She hung out with, she got stoned with, uh, with two lesbians and, <laughs> and we know everything about gender yep. and the, the whole world. Everything. Yep, yep. I'm dumb as a rock. Uh, so I go, well, hon, this is, this is the way I always talk to them. I always talk to them like they're not even my kid. I go, let me explain something to you. If I'm talking to someone, let's just say it's I'm ordering tickets online for my airline ticket. And 
the lady goes, I go, uh, what is the code? And she goes, X, Y, Z. I go, capital X. And she replies, no, I would have told you that. My first response is, go fuck yourself. Yeah. And, and I'm reporting. Your manager. Yeah. And I'm reporting you. Yeah. You don't need to demean me. Right, right. So my oldest one has a demeanor like a criminal. They still can't accept what they do. Well, she don't have to react. No, 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 no. no. We're, we're dealing with a mugger and a victim. If the mugger takes your money and the victim turns around and shoots you, you're like, hey, you didn't need to shoot me. You started the transaction. Yeah, right. You can't be mad. You lit the fire. It's common sense. Yeah. They don't get cut. So now we're crying and... Wait, who's crying? Like, she is or your wife? Yeah, she is. And yeah. I went, listen, you need to call mom. She's not going to let She keeps hanging up because you don't acknowledge you're being a dick. Yeah, yeah. You're being a dick. Right. So right. I don't know how to help. I just need her to sign one thing. I said, here's how it goes. You go, mom, I'm sorry. I'm really frustrated with all this paperwork. It's the last thing I want to do. I know it's the last thing you want to do. Yeah. I shouldn't have done that. It's out of frustration. I see how I pissed you. I'm sorry. Can we just start over? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how else to help you. Right. I gave you all the tools. Right. Bye bye. I get things to do. Yeah. And they don't realize that that's where relationships get closer. When somebody can step up and go, "I'm sorry, I was taking it out on you," um, you know. And then, and then, when when somebody apologizes, something happens in a relationship that just brings you close because you feel safe with that person. You feel yeah. like you've just gone from going like, "I don't know you." So, oh, okay. I remember. I remember why I love you. There we go. That's all it takes. It's so simple. Yeah. I don't know why people find that so difficult. I don't yeah. know. I guess it's an age thing. I think we. I'm going to go with that's an age thing and a wisdom thing and experience. Although, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Although, although, again, you know, part of me is like. Uh, how does my wife not know that? Yeah. How does my, how does my wife not go, hon, you know what? I don't like the way you're talking to me. And we're going to have, I don't want to talk right now. Yeah. And we'll talk later. Right. And not get emotional. And not get emotional. Right, right. right. I'm not emotional. See, now I can't say the same because I'm like that 90% of the time. Last night I went at it with my 16-year-old. Uh-huh. We... <clears throat> She has. <laughs> You've got three girls that are post puberty and a wife going headlong into menopause, and it's just you, one man. How are you not writing this up as a script for ABC right now? Oh, please. Uh, I'll tell you why, but I'll probably get in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Um, because now I'm not going to say it. Wait, so, um, a 16 year old. I'm going to the bathroom. I open the door and the door slams violently on me. I went, whoa, whoa, whoa. She's like, I'm in here. I went, I'm sorry. I didn't know you in there. How do you not know that I'm in here? And you can't, at least you could do is not. And I said, the door is never locked. She's like, well, I said, shut the fuck the fuck are you me? <laughs> Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? You punk. I called her a punk ass. I called her. Dude, I went punk. I'll knock your teeth down. You told who the fuck? Who you think you're talking, little punk ass friend? Oh. And then my wife comes to the top of the stairs. What's going on? I went, I went to go to the bathroom. She shuts the door like a criminal's coming in. And I said, take it easy. And she's like, you got your fucking. And I was like, you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a lot. It's a pressure cooker. And, What's your outlet? What are you doing? Are you getting out of the house? Are you like seeing friends? Um, when does this air? Uh, Tuesday. Okay. Uh, let's just say I've been self-quarantining. Really? 
Okay. Got it. Just because. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so we all have it. Uh huh. The youngest one got tested positive. Oh, and boy. And she is sick. That's the 16 year old? Yes. Okay. Well, maybe Mom's... that's why she's a little on edge. No, it's because we've been on indoors for like two yeah, weeks. Right. That's what, and all in different rooms. And yeah. the two oldest one left the house, go stay with the cousins, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, we've been cooped up and whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mm. matter. No. So, yeah, there's always a very simple drama in my house, Greg. But do you find there's moments also during this that you feel like, wow, I've gotten to know you at a level I didn't before because we're spending so much time together. Is there like closeness or is it just everybody's on edge all the time? Um, it, the pendulum swings back and forth. It yeah. went in the, be, in the beginning when this all started, it was way more intense than I was. I had a lot of issues. Yeah, I was. I rage against the machine. I go full blown conspiracy right off the bat. Uh -huh. I was, I was following Q. I was following this. I was following that. Uh, the, the world's run by pedophiles. Uh, the, the, the underground's gonna win. And I'm, and I'm like, uh, this this pandemic is is a is a full blown takeover. And then, so I, I was constantly online, like, what's going on? This doesn't make sense. They're, they're taking over. They're putting chips in us. They're, this is Bill <laughs> Gates. <He's, laughs> um, Just a man in a house with four women going down the Q rabbit hole. Wait, so did you buy into the QAnon thing for a little bit? Or for a little still, while, I did, yeah. You did? Now. Oh yeah, what oh, I wait, so it made a lot of sense. Made a so lot you of sense. Believe, you believe that there were Democrats that were pedophiles and were drinking <laughs> babies' blood? No, 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 no. That's not Q. Oh. That wasn't that wasn't Q. Q is more like um it was either Q or anonymous. Right. Um I'll tell you where it all started. It, it, it started with, I am Mr. 100% anti-government, anti-politics. Right. I don't believe for one moment we vote. I think it's all a hoax. I believe it's no different than professional wrestling on a whole new level. That it's the same people running the show and they're just putting some puppets out there to keep us entertained. Thousand, there's nothing you can convince me that says that's not it. I think that most of America has moved closer to that over the last 10 years. So with that said, <clears throat> um, before he got in office, and I wasn't happy about him running, I'm like... Oh, Wait, he it. who should not be named? Or Trump. Biden? Okay. Yeah, Trump. All right. I went, are you kidding me? Like this is, it was bad enough traveling abroad when Bush was in office. Cause yeah, right. I, I, remember, I remember that. I remember people would just in Scotland and Paris and they were like, Bush, you bad, war mongrel, blah. I'm like, I didn't vote. Yeah. I, I'm not that guy. Yeah. So, so when Trump is running, I'm like, oh my God. And now we're a reality star. Next is going to be Jay Z. Then it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, Katy Perry. You're right. This George is where we're Tony. going. Yeah. Yeah. This is where we're going. Alex yeah. Rodriguez and J-Lo right. are going to run. Like, right, right, right. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. It, the doors are open and, and, the, and the sort of like parameters of what a president does and how he behaves has changed. Like, I don't well, know what the new accepted behavior is for presidents. Well, Here's what I have a lot of blue collar friends, like hardcore blue collar. And they started going I'm voting for Trump. And I went, I, I never go, are you, I always just ask why? Cause I don't know. I don't follow politics. Yeah. Go, why? Why? 
It's like, you got to why he can't get paid off. He's not a politician and blah, 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 blah. I went, huh? They go, watch, 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 his, watch what he says in his debate. And I'd watch. I'm like, yeah. I, I didn't. So when he won, I was like, wow. I did, still didn't get involved. About a year into it, a year when I saw just every news, every media outlet, every big entertainer, like, what the hell? Like, did he walk out with a Nazi sign? Did he, did, is there dogs going, barking up the street? We need all women to come outside. You are no longer allowed to vote. You are like, what is good? It was the, will you, the women's march, like what? what? The hell am I missing? What yeah. am I missing? Um, so that made me, about two years into it, it made me go, if all we're talking about is every day was Russia, 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 and then nothing comes out. That's when I went, what the hell is going on, man? You just wasted all our time and energy for, and you got everyone emotionally stirred up. What is going on? And that's when, you know, this guy's like, dude, you got to check this out. Check this out. I've always had one friend that's so conspiracy growing yeah. up. You got to have that guy. You got to have yeah, it. He used yeah, to be yeah. on my radio show. I don't yeah. know if you remember if you came on a radio show when it was the four of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Okay, there was Shaka, Larry. Right. Larry's blue collar Shaka was full blown, way ahead of his time. Right, right, right. I remember him. Okay. Okay, so Shock at Corielli would always make fun of him because he was Mr. Matter of fact, it came to the point when he'd start talking, I go, Stop talking. I'm going to put Indian flute music behind you because then it sounds way more powerful. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. He would talk and you'd hear, Woo, like, wow, it makes a lot of sense. Let um, out some dry ice in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so I have to say, I'm not going to lie. I, I, and I had no problem admitting. When I get caught up, I don't have ego anymore. It's like, yeah, without a doubt. I got, there was a time where I went, what threw me off was Trump in like 2000 something. He had the military all in the Oval Office. Yeah. And he, and he said, this is the calm before the storm. And they all said, what does that mean, Mr. President? And he goes, you'll find out. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. And then all the, so I was like, what does that mean? Why would you say something like that? What, what, why would you say something like that? Now, I don't know if that's when people decided to become big YouTubers or I still don't even know where Q came from or Q. All I know is everyone, their mother was passing it around. Right. And so it just made me wonder, like, why did he say that? And then it was all this, like, watch this footage of Hillary when she passed out. She wasn't passed out. She was arrested. Watch again. Watch the angle. Watch the guy holding her arm. She can't walk. She's being shoved in. Oh, the face. I didn't hear about that. That's hilarious. So, yeah, you start seeing all that stuff and you're going, huh? <laughs> then you say, then I wait, got can I ask that. you one thing? Have of you course. been smoking pot or are you still not on pot? No, that's the bad part. This is all straight. Maybe I should start smoking pot again. How, how many years has it been now? I don't know because it, it's not like it's not like AA where I go, I stopped yeah, on yeah, it. Was you don't have one of those needs chips. Yeah. yeah. But I ain't gonna lie to you, I want it bad. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, but I don't want to. I don't want to cut you off. Keep going because I'm curious about all this Q stuff and the conspiracy stuff. I just have okay. to know if you've been smoking pot while you were going through all this stuff. No, I wish I was. Okay. I wish I was. So, um, so Hillary gets arrested, and you start going, and you start what believing that? Yeah, I'm like, that's it, shit. Because then Q will say, "When's the last time you see her walking live in public? <laughs> She's only on tape. She's only and you're like." Huh. Okay. So then you're like, huh? Yeah. Then they showed the Bush senior, uh -huh. his funeral and the funeral. 
only certain people got envelopes. Ah. Trump showed up late, uh-huh. which was, I'm sorry, it was, it was funny to me. He made yeah. me laugh. I ain't going to lie to you. He made uh-huh. me laugh yeah. hard. Yeah. He comes in, he's, and he leaves before the caskets whisked away. And everyone was like, how oh, dare you? He went, I am busy. <laughs> He's not busy. He doesn't do I'm, anything. I'm busy. Right. <laughs> so, so with that said, you know, that, that video got me for a while. So it was like, uh, they're all handed envelopes and they are, it's a little weird. Yeah. You, you see, you see like Hillary, look at the envelope and she, she like just kind of stares out straight and Obama's looking at it. And Michelle kind of looks at him in a strange manner. Then Laura Bush looks at hers and she shows it to George and George looks at it and he goes, he looks straight up, but Jeb goes like this. He he's watching his father's casket go by. And then he goes, he looks at it. He goes, like his heart, his hand went like this and he went, and you're like, what the hell did he just say? Dude, yeah, his, what father's, is it? his father's being whisked away. Yeah. How powerful is that a note that made you react like that? Right. So, of course, they're like, that's Bush Sr. with a note saying they know everything. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> So, so there's a little thing talking about like some skull and crossbones shit, like some Illuminati stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so, you know, and I'm also a diehard believer. I'm not going to, you know, I, I, I'm also a believer. The nine 11 there's, I'm not buying a couple yahoos learn how to fly plane prop planes and then said, okay, we'll jump on a 747 and we'll just direct it and we'll go right into towers and make this perfect turn yeah. and boom and go in. And, right. oh, and, they're, yeah. and they're in a strip club the night before discussing their plans while they're throwing right. and, dollies in the G string of some fucking runaway. Yeah. And they found the passport and the rubble. Like, come on, man. Are we yeah. really that dumb. Yeah. Come on, man. And, but but I also believe that you know, it's it's a tough it's a tough thing to talk about because you know a lot of people are involved. Yeah. And the last thing you want to know, it's like your house got burnt down, and you're like those bastards over there. But you kind of have a hunch that one of your own people burnt your own house down, bro. Uh huh. Yeah. Even though even so- though you lost someone. So wait, are you saying the government was complicit or the government knew about it and allowed it to happen? I, my own common sense theory, not common sense, how I register it when I look yeah. at it all. And that's why you're on the podcast. I mean, this is, is, this is fantastic. Is that the Bush family, without a doubt, whoever they're connected with, Saudi, whatever, the biggest links of money and power are the ones responsible for that. But define responsible, allowing it? They planned it. Orchestrating it. it. They planned it. They orchestrated it, it. hands down. The Saudis, the big Saudis all left on private planes on September 11th when there was no fly orders. And that was allowed. Yeah. Hey, look, man. I'll, I'll never so, know what happened, but I know one thing. I know that there was a folder that was put on GW's desk by, by uh, uh, Clinton that said, by Clinton, right? And he said, this is what's going to happen. Major airlines, uh, major planes are going to be hijacked and they're in the, in the Northeast uh, and, and this, this is going to happen. And it was completely, you could say ignored or you could say willfully looked over. Uh, I, you know I, I believe they let it happen. I believe they knew it. I believe they planned it. I believe they let it happen because you always got to look at this. Even with what's going on now, who's making the big money. Yeah. And when you have money, I, if I can make, I, I can make this vest a billion dollars if I had $999 million to advertise it. 
and to spread it as propaganda. Right. So when you have gazillionaires that are able to run networks, run news channels, run the biggest corporations in the world, run all pharmaceutical, you know, when my wife, my wife's um, eight years back and forth to cancer, still has blah, blah, blah. I don't need to get into it. Oh, that. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, it's all good. She's, she's going to be on four years miracle of living on a trial. But the point of this story is none of us really just sit and reflect and think anymore. We just, we're, we're occupied 24 seven. You get up, you check your phone, you're in your phone, you're, you're on your iPad, you're in the car, you're listening to everyone, whatever you're, you, you want your downtime, you watch TV, you're information the news. overload. Yeah. Thousand percent. Um, there's 4 billion channels, there's Netflix, whatever. I started noticing when I traveled, all these hospitals popping up everywhere, everywhere new wings, new, whatever, new, <clears throat> how do you anticipate so many tens of millions of people getting sick? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The corporations knew that there was going to be a pandemic. Who makes all the money? I don't know. <laughs> how many times, do you ever look into Fauci? You know how many times he says there's going to be a great pandemic? He even said Trump administration is going to have to deal with a serious pandemic. Yeah. Why would you say something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because Explain scientifically, that. it was due. It was due. I mean, they they look at um, the trends of... I mean, I think the, the problem is, is that because we have less land... Uh, people are developing closer and closer to, um, you know, wildlife, basically, which is what happened. And they're encroaching on animals that carry diseases. And so they know it's going to cross over and that when it does cross over, it brings disease with it. So you think uh, Ozzy bit off the bad head and that's how we got all this? <laughs> no, I think it's those weird little armadillo things. Who wants to eat that shit? You know? Do you believe in bioterror? Sure. Do you believe we should all be shut down? Uh, I think we should, in areas that are hot zones, I think extra precautions should be taken to limit the amount of uh, interactions people have. I think when, when areas are clear, you know, you look at New Zealand, have a fucking party, have OzFest, go at it. But if you got an area right now like California where... I think they're seeing that British strain start to take over. I think you got to shut shit down for a little while. Let me ask you this. Who's had the flu this year? Oh, is it down? Are cases of the flu down? I don't think it even exists anymore. Oh, no shit. Yeah, that makes sense. Where's the common cold? Where's bronchitis? Where's strep throat? Where's, you know, they keep changing the name. It goes from Wuhan to COVID-19 to uh, coronavirus. Why do you keep changing the name? Well, coronavirus is the category that COVID-19 is under. A coronavirus just means that there's a, a virus that's spreading uh, that the, you know, I, I don't know the scientific definition, but then underneath it, the actual disease is called uh, COVID-19. You know, <clears throat> a lot time during this too, I follow, I follow George Carlin, his page. They, some people still post his stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. His absolutely... daughter Kelly runs it. It's fucking great. Who does? Yes. Yeah, his Kelly, daughter okay. Kelly. Yeah. i tell you what. He basically lays it all on the line a long time ago when it comes to who runs the world when you patent diseases, when you patent vaccines and diseases, I'm sorry, but eventually you have a motivation. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I know. I see that. I see that. I mean, it's the, so, same thing. it's the same thing with the 9-11 cover up. You look at what's the motivation. The motivation is there's oil in the Middle East. And uh, at the time they were fucking with us. They were talking about 
you know, uh, embargo, oil embargoes, they were talking about no longer trading on the dollar. They wanted to start using the euro and that would have crippled us. And so, so there was a reason we wanted to get in there, which is why I do believe, and I, I'm going to get shit for this, but, but I do believe. We're allowed to think. It's okay. Yeah. I do believe that there was a, an awareness that it might happen and that there was a very passive way of dealing with it that makes me think that they didn't mind if it happened. I don't think like you do that they planned it, but I believe that they weren't unhappy that it happened. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I can see either, either way. It's big billionaire power club. Right, right. And we're all caught in the middle. And that billionaire club, they are, they have exponentially gotten wealthier since 9-11. And the working class has gotten poor. And that trend and has been going on since the 1970s. Well, right now you've divided basically into communism. There's way up here and the rest are dropping to way down here. Business yeah. owners are going plummeting. The everyday person, we've become Walmart. You either own it or you work for it. Yeah. And that is a frightening time in humanity. Right. And I don't care what the hell's going around, dude. I, I mean, I do care. You know, if anything, I think it makes you go, you better tighten up with your health. If you get the gout four times a year, you better start tightening up. If you got to take a pill because you cholesterol, because you snort cholesterol every day and you're snorting booze and, and you're living life like you're 22 years old, it is time to go. Hey, man, uh, the flu can knock you out. You're done. Yeah. So, this, this too, I, I, I know so many people that have gotten sick, not a, not an overwhelming amount. No one's died in my circle. So the way I look at it as, and well, I could be I, wrong. What are you talking about? Pete Corielli's dad died. Yes, I know that. Of course, he had a lot of issues. He had heart right. issues. He was old. Yeah. He had a lot of things going on. Right. Would he have survived the flu? Would he have survived bronchitis? Would he have survived something else that's serious that could attack him? Right. So I'm not saying people haven't died. What I'm saying is I like the, the method of a Sweden where they said, listen, elderly, stay home. Right. If you're, if you're a fatso, you got a lot of conditions. <laughs> yeah. There should be a way in. It should be like an MMA fight. You get yes. weighed in, you show up in some Speedos, some hot, chicks, some hot chicks fucking wave at the crowd a little bit, and we decide Let's whether you got to stay home. Are you going to take it? Let me tell you something. If that was the rule right now, would you take a chance going out there? You know, here's, here's the problem. In Sweden, it's a, very wealthy, it's a very wealthy country, and the average number of people living in a house is two and a half. When you get to LA where it's spreading like wildfire, it's because you have a lot of frontline workers. You have a lot of poor people where they're living with six people in a one bedroom apartment and it's three generations. And it's not possible to not in, have a younger person infect an older person anymore. I mean, that's why LA spiking. It's not the fucking, the liberals on the West side, dude, I live in Venice beach. You, you see people wearing a mask while driving alone in their Prius with their body yeah, sticker I on. I, I, and it's insane. So nobody's getting it. So everybody thinks it's fine. But you go downtown where you've got real working people and that's where the COVID is spiking. <clears throat> Again, it's which ones are actually dying and how are they being treated and is that worth killing everyone else on a whole different level? Because that's what's happening. Right. No, I my kid, that. my kid's in full blown depression for a while. Yeah. She hates school. She used to love school. Yeah. She's the dad. We're not allowed to hang out with each other. We got to stand this for that's not humanity. Yeah. And that's way more dangerous than actually catching this thing 
and trying to fight it off or using your own will to build your immune system or your own common sense. I've been living, my, my wife has a low, uh, you know, she's had stage four for four years, Greg. So we used to get, yeah, you gotta be very careful, but yeah, I know that. Yeah. So I am careful. Yeah. So when I go in, like, you know, people go, don't go near your grandma. You can kill her. Well, what were you doing seven months ago? Oh, you're showing up to grandma. How you doing, grandma? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Like, what was the common yeah. sense? What were right. you doing eight months ago? All right. Oh, you showing up with a fever and giving giving elderly hugs? Now, what, what what makes more sense? Letting them be alone at that stage in life? That, yeah. if anything, is more dangerous. Yeah. They need people around. They need love. We need hugs. I'm not buying all this bullshit. I'm sorry. It pisses well, me off. If my kid, let me just say this. If if my wife is sick. I'm going to get arrested. You're not stopping me from going in the fucking hospital to see her. What kind of sick deranged thing is that? Oh, because, well, if, if you're a caretaker and you have a mask and gloves and that protects you, well, what the fuck protects me? Mm -hmm. I got to see my, I will, I will, I, that can cause to such distress, such guilt. If you don't allow me to see a family member, right. what, what, what kind of thought process is that? Right. To me, that's disturbing. And I the see. fact that people just roll over it. Well, yeah, it's weird. You know, fuck that. Wake the fuck up. Now I get that. Look, it's tough. It's tough. But the, the bottom line is we have to find a way, like you said, we need to protect humanity. We need to protect, you know, the sense of community that people need as much as they need food and air. It's, it's, a, it's essential. And, and you, you are seeing a lot more um, mental illness because of it. Um, they're, they're, there's not conclusive. They say suicide is up. I don't know how much it's up because the studies aren't really in yet. Those numbers take a while to really quantify. But the other thing is, you know, look, if we had locked down hard and fast with this thing and it didn't turn political and, it, and we didn't have anti-maskers, which makes no fucking sense, put a fucking mask on. It's not that hard. I get what you're saying about not being around older people in an, a, a, you know, in a, in, in an improper way, but that you should be able to see them if you're wearing a mask. We didn't do it. This thing could have ended or been slowed down eight months ago. If people had just adhered to the simple rule of wear a mask and don't get, don't get too close to people, but they did. First thing Fauci said in March was you don't need a mask. So what is that right. about? Right. Well, he made a mistake. So wait, wait, wait. So right there, non-politically, what do you say about that? Because he's the man in charge. I think that it's science. So whose fault is it? Well, that was if he's the head of health and he says in March, there's no reason to wear a mask. Is it a political figure's fault or that's your guy? Well, he's Who's not a political blame, figure. And why isn't anyone blaming? Well, he's not a political figure. He's a scientist. And I think with science, you oh, make mistakes and you so learn Mr. from it. Mr. Scientist, who knows everything, basically said in March, you don't need a mask. So why ain't everyone pointing the finger at him? Well, I think if you look at the history of disease, scientists are not always right on the first crack. I think it's a, it's a, it evolves and you learn from it and you correct because it. Because they don't know squat. Well, they I would just say they don't know guess. squat. No, they're scientists, Jim. They know something. They don't mean shit. I got a white coat on, so I'm like, uh, <laughs> you believe my numbers now. Just get out of here. You just admitted he didn't know at the time. Well, he's he a scientist. A he has all the numbers. How yeah. do you not know? Because he basically said, why the mask? You touch your mask. If you don't have gloves, uh, you're touching, you're breathing on it. Now you touch this and it's a mask don't mean crap. Yeah. Your hands touching things. You're wiping your nose. You pick off. You, you scratch. Your hands touch things. You're, it's, it's all such madness and everyone just points finger you could say we could have shut it all down nobody knows that scientists will tell you nobody knows that i mean you get a vaccine right now which basically is a, 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 it's a trial no one knows if it works and people are like shove it in me what how do you come up with a vaccine in months you buying this you're buying this. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's it seems like 
we don't have a lot of options. I mean, if we want to speed up, I mean, what, if you want to talk about herd immunity, you know, that, that can happen, that can happen, but we don't know that it's going to happen. We don't know that there's not going to be variances of the disease that'll make it stronger and spread quicker. And so you have to, you know, I think you got to roll the dice and say, what is the number of people that might die from a vaccine versus what's the number that will definitely die from us not trying to put the brakes on this thing? More younger people have died in the vaccine than they died of COVID. I haven't heard of any young people dying from the vaccine. Oh, yeah, they have died from the, if you went on the CDC last week and then they shut it down for a day, it clearly says COVID shot, death. Now, again, they're going to go, well, it's kind of related to uh, some countries have stopped it completely because of too many deaths. And they're like, eh, let's hold off on this. Well, I but haven't you're heard, not I've heard anything that. conclusive. I mean, it's like when you talk about uh, Corielli's dad and would he have died anyway. I mean, there's a certain number of people that are going to get the shot that were perhaps dying of something else anyway. Right. It's so not, it's not definitely the point of the fact. My only issue is, and we're going to stand differently from this, there's no reason to shut the world down. Mm. Use common sense. If you, want to take your, if you want to take your shot, go for it. Because I'm telling you right now, if you can't see the writing in the wall, this has nothing to do with right now. What's the next one? What do you do for the next one? What do you do for the next? It, 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 this is the beginning of squashing your head and going from now on, every time someone sneezes, now they're going to be in your, you mark my word, they'll be in your house. Doom, 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 doom. We have to uh, come take your daughter, Greg, because it says here on the, I had the state of Jersey call me the other day and I'm like, dude, I ain't answering your questions. Why? Because well, of your daughter being sick? Yeah. Right. Uh, well, is she quarantined? Go fuck yourself. Mm. You don't get to come in my house. You don't get to talk to me. And if you don't believe that there's something bigger going on, I don't know what to tell everyone. Well, I mean, look, I think that this is something that came on fast and furious. I mean, over 400,000 people have died. That's not a small number of people. I mean, 9-11. Numbers are rigged, bro, and you know that. Well, you they're, know, rigged. they're rigged in both you know. directions. They're rigged you know. in both directions. For every person that, you're, that you would say um, did not die of COVID, they had a pre-existing condition, there's also somebody that died of COVID that wasn't diagnosed with COVID. So we're not counting them in the column. I think it's a wash. Still, the amount does not add up to the devastation that you are putting in everyone's life right now. Mm. In my personal opinion, I know I'll get people that are foaming at the mouth and you, you know, I unfollow you. Please unfollow me. Uh, I just, you know what? You lost my respect. Please. You never had it. Go right. away. Right. Um, no, I think you, I need, I need people like you on the podcast because not too many people speak out about it this way. And I think it's important to hear both sides. Um, and I understand the frustration. I totally and I can't imagine having a kid that's got it and then having the government calling me and checking on me because it, that doesn't feel, uh, that doesn't feel right. My, no. my side of it is more of, you know, if we, if we look at what we can do for our country versus just for ourselves, there's a different agenda. I think you have to look at, you know, um, how do we keep from losing another 400,000 people this year? And it's, it's simple. We got to, we got to find a way to not shut down businesses. I think there should be outdoor dining. I think that, um, you know, we have to, like I said, go after the hot spots, not close everybody down, but look at if Seattle's got a hundred percent increase this month, well, then everybody's got to fucking keep it tight. You got to, you know, um, make sure that people are, it just, the mask thing does work, Jim. I mean, it slows things down. And to ask people to sacrifice wearing a mask is not a huge sacrifice when you're talking about countries have done that and they've seen results. New Zealand is fucking COVID free. There's a number of countries that were strict about it and are not losing people right New now. New Zealand has eight people. Correct. 
Right. They have 108 people. Yeah. And they live 500 miles apart. Right. So that's like saying, uh, you know, the island of Gubali in the middle of nowhere. Hey, they're COVID free. Yeah, there's eight people there. Yeah. You can't prove that was masks that helped right. there out. Didn't and I ain't hurt. saying, but I'm what not if, saying don't wear the mask. It, what if it helps a little bit? Why can't people just all wear masks for the time being? I'm not on the mask debate. I, I never said anti mask I, I think the mask uh, for the most part, if I'm walking alone in the street, I'm not wearing a mask. Hmm. No, if, I'm, if I'm in the grocery store, sure. I'll wear a mask. I think you should do that anyway, because people uh, in the past are going, they're sick, but I can't stand going to the gym and I hear some guy hacking. Yeah. I don't like wearing a mask in the gym. It's it, that is the worst. Yeah. The absolute worst. Um, again, I think there's, there's cases where when you start saying we're, we're just in a very dangerous time. I don't think people are thinking deeper where we're allowing a lot to happen. And if you ain't questioning anything, you're just going, yup, that's what, that's what the numbers say. That's what the scientists said. Scientists, are, when you allow numbers that can be and will be and have been manipulated to control situations, we're in a very dangerous situation. Very dangerous. You have right. to see who's becoming billionaires. Who's becoming, who's making money from this? Right. Somebody's making stupid money from this. Well, the numbers have been manipulated in, in both directions. And I think that the, at the core of a lot of this is that- Let me ask you a question. Have... Let's get off this. Let's get off this. Okay. I want to talk about Bill Gates. Okay. Do you know this banana is investing millions in trying to block the sun? Did you see that? No. <laughs> Wait, is that supposed to stop global warming? Yeah. How's he going to do it? It doesn't matter. The point is, he's a madman. Mm -hmm. Who would even suggest coming up with that idea? What about, what about Elon Musk putting people on Mars? What? People, people talk about Elon Musk putting people on Mars as like, you know, he may not get there, but the technology that will come out of trying may lead to something else. Okay, so here's another point. When you have guys like Elon Musk, Bill Gates, and everyone else that makes billions of dollars, the World Health Organization, they said this wasn't a pandemic. And then Bill Gates gave them $50 billion, says, I'd like to look in vaccines. It immediately became a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So these are little things, no one questions, but have happened. So the point is, if you have that many great minds with a gazillion dollars, why ain't you distributing to help humanity in ways where you're not worrying about 30 years from now blocking the sun. Wait, Bill Gates. Can you imagine putting up billions of dollars to learn how to block a sun? But Are Bill you Gates kidding me? Give billions of dollars away. He's he's going to give away his 90% of his fortune by the time he dies. <laughs> not please. <laughs> that's what that is. That, <laughs> that's what that is, Greg. Stop with that. <laughs> You just said like you should me. give his That's money. That's like me and taking a penny. That's like me taking a penny and go. He gives his fortunes away. Someone's going to die and fight for that penny. So, what's the Bill Gates Foundation? You think that's all some kind of a uh, PR scheme? God, look at his history. The man was questioned by the government. You ever see that one when he's questioned by the government about him? It, it, with his problems with Microsoft. And what did he do after that? He took billions and put out a, 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 a whole new campaign. He became the new tour. Oh, he's the greatest guy in the world. He's been, look what happened before all this. Yeah. He was not a good human being. No. no, it's a lot like when you look at the history of billionaires, you go back to Rockefeller and Carnegie. Yes. And 
You know, they amassed yes. a lot of money on the blood and sweat of other people. And then yes. all of a sudden they went, hey, I'm going to build a fucking school. Hey, I'm going to build a hospital. How about this? Uh, how about this opera house? Let's let's slap my name on it. So I get some good advertising out of it. No, I agree 100 percent. The means that they got the money was terrible. But I don't think that he is currently trying to manipulate world economics to make more money. I think that he is a philanthropist and uh, I don't question his motives now. I I will definitely I do. question how he got there. I do. Anyone that cheats and gets that much money and power will always cheat. It's like a ball play. It's like Clemens. Yeah. All right. Once he started cheating, he had to cheat more. When, once you started taking steroids, you couldn't stop taking a steroids. Right, right. You just you became once you're a cheater, you can't stop cheating. And yeah. if you if you're not a good person, not a good moral person, and we all know them, and you start getting power and money, it doesn't make you a better person. It makes you more evil. Dude, how many comics do you know that were fucking thieves when they were open micers and they're thieves as superstars? How many, how many famous comics are still fucking stealing jokes? Not a word. Not a word from Jim Brewer. He's sealing his lips. This is where the line is drawn. They know who they are. <laughs> have you ever had anybody steal something from you? Oh, you have no clue. Really? I have one of the most amazing stories of time and grace that it's mind boggling. I won't say names. Okay. And again, this could all just be in my head. Uh-huh. 1999. You're on SNL. Nope. Got out. Start a family. Leaving everything. I no more movies. Dropped the agency. I did, I'm, I hate show business. Pure evil. Pure disgusting. The taste of my mouth is disturbing. Can't stand it anymore. I can't. I can't deal with the egos. I can't. I just. I've seen too much. I grew up very. And maybe I'm too weak for the industry. I grew up very moral grounded, very moral. Irish, um, the curse of being Irish. We don't, we're, we're, we're good. Our ethic, not only do we have ethics, we can't tolerate other people. We I, I can't. Irish people are like, we, we, it's like we need to make things right for everybody else and it can yes. ruin our lives. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I enjoy that. It's called a ghost angel. I just, uh, Malcolm Gladwell has a book where he talks about ghost angels, people that end up sacrificing their own well being because they have, like whistleblowers. Yes. So, yeah. you know, coming from that background, do I, I, I'm an all for one, one for all guy. When, it, when, when you were around, I, when I would connect with people, I'm like, we should all do something, but we're right. in the industry where it's all for one and one, you know, we're right. just for ourselves. Yeah. 1999, I said to this person, and I, I'm, I'm going to make it very vague because, you know, if I say how they were connected to me in life, you'll go, oh, that's so-and-so. So, and, and I'm not in the bit what, what I'm... For me, the ending of the story goes very well. And I apologize if it's a little too long. So 1999, I say to this person, now part of me was being a dick because I knew I wasn't going to be working with this person anymore. Yeah. I said, so I want to do this thing where I tour I'm going to bring my friends. They're all musicians. Think of it as comedy, whatever the tour, we're on a bus, we film everything. I'll never forget his eyes. He went, oh my God, exact words. This is brilliant. <laughs> 
Yeah. I don't think this has ever been done. This uh-huh. is. And he go and I went. I was like, "Yeah, it's a good idea." And he's like, "It's amazing." A month later, I let him go. Wait, you let him go? What do you mean? I I, I cut ties with this person. Okay. It was gonna be. It was it was a work thing. Yeah. Tour starts. A lot of things, a lot of things going on. I, I, I have, we're on the tour. It was amazing. And Metallica shows up at a show and we're mosh pitting in the back of the bus. Yeah, I remember that tour. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it was in the middle of it. Someone comes to me and goes, Hey man, I saw someone and there was cameras and they were doing a bus and music. No, no, but they changed their look and blah, blah, blah. And then I looked towards the end of, uh, uh, a, I'll call it a product. I don't want to give too much away. This this person sold a concept to a network, which led to a monstrosity explosion. I know who you're talking about. And... I knew exactly where it came from. Yeah. And it stepped and, on yours because you hadn't sold yours yet. Yeah, because I was going to film it, then sell it. Right, right, right. So, so he, while he, I was he pitched it, sold it, and then did the tour. So he got out ahead of you. Right. And, that, and that's what worked back then. Right. So I'll never forget and this is another whole, you know, my wife probably, and I can't tell you, Greg, I, I was just like the break and stuff. And I wanted blood. Yeah, I yeah. wanted blood. And I'd see how this person was accused of taking X, Y, and Z from others. I was like, Oh, please, please. Yeah. You have no clue. All right. And then I saw one of the people involved and they were snarling. They were like, Hey man, just want to congratulate you on your success. <laughs> that is never David Feldman was just on and he goes, that is my least fucking favorite thing to hear from another comedian because it's, oh, this was not, a, this was not a comedian. Okay. This was the, the seller. Yeah. And you know, I have to say it took all my might. And I remember I was looking at Chris Rock's over there and Seinfeld over there, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, <sighs> so I'm in my basement and I'm looking for the day I met and the, the, the idea I wrote down and all that stuff. And I'm go, I'm going to go after them. Yeah. Full blown publicity, everything right. taking them down. My wife is watching me. She's got, her second, we got our second kid. By now she found the Lord. All right. So I'm yeah. dealing, I'm dealing with that. All right. That's another whole, it's another whole thing. Uh-huh. Cause in the beginning it was like, do you think Jesus? I'm like, Hey, 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 easy. <laughs> you worry about you. I don't worry about what yeah, I, yeah, yeah. right. Me, me and the big man, we're good. I talked to him personally. Don't, don't. Yeah. Like, don't worry. Don't please. Not right now. Yeah. But I'll never forget, she stops me. She's like, what are you doing? Like, they took and look what they get. Look what they did to me. And she goes, let them have it. I went, are you, what the fuck is wrong with you? She went, let them have it. I went, no, you don't let someone just take and then, and then they, and they think they, 
just watch what happens in 10, 15, if that's yeah, all they got. Right, right. If that's how they, she goes like this. She goes, Jim, you chose your path because you wanted to be by your family. You chose that. Yeah. Because you did the right thing. You chose because you said your parents getting older and I want to be around them. She goes, you have them here. You move them here. You have them here. She goes, you chose to do radio because you wanted to be home all day for the kids. You're home all day. You got everything you need. And I was like, no, no, walking. Yeah, right. I don't got, I'm not 20, 30. Ah. Yeah, right. Um, I'm struggling. She's like, you're not struggling. We, we live fine. I don't want to live fine. I want what's deserved. Yeah. She pulled the old, God's got you right where he wants you. I don't want to hear that. Uh-huh. Then I watch the castles begin to crumble. Oh, this one's, the industry's pissed at them because they might be double dipping and doing this. And this one's being sued. This one's losing it. This one's star just plummeting, not not falling, plummeting. Yeah. And I'm going, oh, oh, wow. Uh, cut to the time I get to spend with my, I held my dad to his last breath, man. Right. That's all I wanted. I, I wanted that so bad in life. Did not want that man to be alone. Did not want my mom to be alone. I got to, I got those moments, powerful moments. I didn't want the phone call. The phone call sucks. Um, watch my girls grow. Was was around, you know, my wife first time, 2012, first round of cancer, 2014, next round of cancer, 2016. Sorry, man, she's done. What? Yeah. Um, and to be around for it. So this is where it gets nuts. So, so I saw the main culprit a couple of years ago and they reached out, Hey man, you want to do a, you want to do a thing together? I'd love to have you as a guest. And there was a slight part of me going, you don't want me as a guest. Cause I will expose what you don't want exposed and you know it. Uh huh. And I went, you know what? I'm comfortable. You know what? I just didn't even respond. Yeah. And then they responded back by dropping names and try, oh, this one and this one and this one. Didn't even respond. I'm blissful. It's all good. Yeah. Cut to three years ago, two or three years ago. This is crazy. I stay at this little place in LA. I don't know what I'm promoting. I don't go to LA. And I go, Hey man, is there somewhere to eat around here? He goes, so I, and it was, all I want to remember is directly across the street is an IHOP. And you leave the place and you make a left and there's a little taco joint on the corner and like a pizza taco bar whatever. So I, I go in there like no industry people are going to be in here. There's no way. It's mostly college kids. I sit down. It's late at night, 10 30. <clears throat> and I'm minding my business. And all of a sudden the other person involved. Is who, a comedian or an industry person? Uh, non-industry. Okay. Are you from, you're from Boston? New York, but I went to college in Boston. That's where I started doing stand-up. I wonder if you were there that night. At this, at this place in LA? Yeah, so let me tell you where it's going because I don't want to give too much away because I okay. don't want to... I, I'm not about dragging names. I'm just about, right. wow, the story. So this person comes up to me. It throws me off. He goes, Hey man, I look up one. Hey, wow. What are you, what are you doing here? And somebody had passed away and unbeknownst to me, there was a, a 
a bunch of people in the bar area that gathered from the same city that knew this person. Okay. And this person goes, I just want to tell you how much respect I have for you and that documentary you do with your dad. I wish, I wish I got to have that time. And I could see the, I, I heard the pain and I heard the, the, the human in this person. And I just was like, ah, it was such a healing moment for me. Right. And it went all the way back to all I saw was flashes of going, let them have it. Yeah. Yeah. You got everything you need, but I, I couldn't comprehend that at that moment. Uh huh. Um, and it was, uh, and he goes, Hey, if you, if you want to come over, so-and-so's in there and so-and-so's in there. And I wish I could tell the rest of the story because there's a, <laughs> there's a funny moment with a very big name comedian. So I fit. <laughs> so I'll just say, uh, it was very healing. And I just, the full circle was unbelievable. Uh, and I ended up going in that bar area I didn't hang out with this person that approached me, but I went up to another person I saw, big name, uh, one of us. Yeah. Uh, um, and I go, hey, he goes with his thick accent. What are you, you know? What are you doing here? Yeah. I went, dude. I was, I, I was just, I came in, and then this one came over, and I got. <laughs> I go, you know what, man, I used to, I, I feel bad for some of the emotions I used to have. I go, uh, they, they just came up and they were really kind and really meant it from the heart. And mm -hmm. you know what? Yeah, that's a good person. <laughs> and the person I'm talking to just stops and he goes, have you seen the Instagram page? Jesus Christ. No, you're way off. <laughs> That's great. That's fucking great. I started you were, you were, you were having this blissful transcendent moment of forgiveness and a comedian <laughs> came in and went, motherfucker, you're a comedian. You're not a Christian. You're a goddamn bar comic who made his way by dealing with fucking hecklers and scrapping and getting ahead. And that party is never going to be dead. You can move. No, no, back, no way. You can <laughs> move back to You can move to Jersey and be around your family <laughs> and watch your fucking dad die and watch your wife get cancer. But the bottom line is you're still a fucking, you're, you're a, you're a fighter. You're a scrapper. Oh, don't forget man. that. I, it was a moment in time that I will never, I'll That's never forget the way this, I don't ever forget the way he was leaning. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget the way I was like pouring my heart out to sell the heart of this other person. Yeah, and yeah. He just went, oh uh, yeah, you see the Instagram page? You <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> And of course, I went to Instagram case. I just started yeah. belly laughing. Belly Dude, I laughing. really believe that in this world or in this business anyway, you got to have that one person whose success brings you joy, whose failures bring you empathy and care. And you also need the guy whose failures make you want to go on a fucking rooftop in Jersey and jump up and <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'll be, I'll be dead honest. There's been a lot of those. There's been a lot of those. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. <laughs> and I imagine myself standing over them, going one, yeah. two. Yeah. Dude, I used to listen to the song. Some of the, some of the reasons why I love Metallica so much is because I take songs and I relate them to specific people. Yeah, and. There's been another another comic who I can't stand, and and our history goes way back to um, uh, the Boston Comedy Club. Yeah, just what a 
what a slimy and and this person is whatever they they made their niche but as a human i ain't got any respect and every time this person would fail i would turn on king nothing by metallica where's your crown king nothing i blast it <laughs> Careful what you wish. You just might get it. Careful what you wish. You might regret it. Brown, then it all crashes down. And you lost your crown. And you put your finger, but there's no one around. Just one more day to play my king. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Love yeah. it. Yeah. That's and funny. you're left right. with just your name. Where's your crown, King? Nothing. There's a lot of King Nothings out there. <laughs> I think <laughs> the person you're talking about is also my dance on the rooftop guy. Because he was a lot of people's dance on the rooftop guys from New York. And then he went to L.A. and he became beloved because he fit in well with the ass kissing fucking, uh, you know, industry loving we'll talk once we're off the air all right let me just say is this person not attractive yes wow yeah, yeah. it is the same person yeah, it's the same person oh yeah the worst but anyway oh. you brought up music i came up with a, a bit that i want to do with you on the show Ooh. it's called uh change it leave it or put the windows up and crank it. These are guilty pleasure songs, songs you'd be embarrassed if anybody knew you were listening to. Oh, I already got two of them. I'll name the song. You tell me, do you change the channel? Do you leave oh. it on? Or do you crank up the windows and turn it up? Okay. Our lips are sealed by the Go-Go's. Oh, I, I cranked that up. Yeah. Crank that up. Crank that shit Dance up. Dance to it. Yep. I think about Act the music video. Out. They're in a fucking convertible dancing in the back seat. Sure, I, wanted, I wanted to do a remake of that song. I want to metal it out. I tried really? to make my daughter sing it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The best. Do you hear them? They yeah. talk about us. Yeah. Telling lies. Well, well that's, that's a surprise. surprise. It's a big one of these songs, which yeah. is why I like it. Even though it, I like to see, it's really just, hey, screw you, man. Right, you, right. Shut your mouth. Right, right. You liars, little punk asses. There's something badass about chick bands, too. You know, My wife just watched the um, documentary on them. She's like, you got to watch. It's really good. Does it deal with when they sexually harassed the roadie <laughs> backstage? They got sued. How bad would you want to be that guy? <laughs> In their prime, in oh. their prime. Oh. Yeah, right, right. Oh. <laughs> I would say, look, I'll drop the lawsuit. Uh, I get weak when I look at you. <laughs> Belinda went out a lot. Oh, I used yeah. to pretend and making out where I was. Oh. Yeah. Oh. The pre -puffy, okay, what's the next one? Pre-puffy Belinda. Uh, Careless Whisper by George Michael. Oh, uh, change it. Yeah, man. I just have ugh, no karma chameleon by boy George. Oh, I will. I will break something violently. <laughs> and song makes me violent. <laughs> well, part of it is we grew up when music videos were, that's what you did. You fucking came home, you put on MTV and you watched music videos. That's and right. When you, and when you think about what that video was for Karma Chameleon, you go like, can't handle it. Dancing I can't, around. I can't, I can't, yeah. I, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I just, I can't, I can't. Yeah. Ugh. No. All right. I, I give you, I give you a for effort and I, and I respect, uh, your drive to, to, uh, go as far as you go, but good. Uh, can we, can we, can we, can we, can we, can we, oh, stop. Yeah, yeah. You know what else I hate? Love shack, baby. I hate them. All, be, all B-52s or just that song? That song, I hate that yeah. song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was on the list. That wait, was on so, the list. Wait a minute. 
um, I will be your father figure. Now I like that song. It's been redone. Is a father figure? Which one was that George Michael song? Uh, What'd you just say? George Michael was Careless Whisper. How does Karma, that go? Karma Chameleon by Boy George. Right, no, but what's a Careless Whisper is... is was it Wham or was remember. it Boy George? I think it was Boy George. Careless Whisper was... was was I'm sorry, George Michael. It was George Michael. Yeah. yeah. Well, how did that go? Is that... Careless Whisper... Uh, uh. I would play it, but then I'd get flagged by YouTube and I wouldn't be able to yeah, put yeah. my fucking okay. podcast can I, on. Can I, can I tell you another thing that goes on in my house? Yeah. I have a blind in one eye, deaf, dementia cat. Yeah. He doesn't know where he's at. And he does this every two to three hours. Look at this thing. Drives me nuts. Nuts. What do you want? He can't hear. Watch. <laughs> you see him? <laughs> He, he doesn't even know, he's blind on this side, so he can't even see or hear me showing up. Yeah, yeah. Watch, I'll spook him. <laughs> I'm sorry. What do you want? What do you want? I'm not sure what you want. Uh, look at that thing. Oh, man. How much time has he got left? Not a lot. Because, Some of these yeah. cats won't fucking die. They just keep on going. He won't die, and I pay too much money for him. Oh, yeah, I got stage. a dog like that. Yep. I got a blind dog who's deaf, and she pisses on all the rugs, so we're constantly buying new fucking rugs. <laughs> Wait, let me show you some. Wait, do you see this on my couches? Oh, uh, that's what we got on the rug. Yeah, the wee-wee pad. That's, that's for the yep. diabetic cat. Oh, you got two cats. Yeah, the other yeah. one's diabetic. Dude, when we go away, we have to, nobody will, will babysit our dogs because they're a pain in the ass. One of them bites. So we have to board <laughs> them. We board them for two dogs. She has to get eye drops every day, twice. He has to take, ready for this fucking uh, Lexapro, anti-anxiety, because he's to keep him from biting oh. people. It costs $125 a day to board them. We go away for 10 days, that's $1,200. It's a lot of money. Yeah. I'm gonna. Can you hear him in the background, dude? Your house is nice. I like it. It's it's time to go though. I'm gonna sell it. Why? As soon as my daughter, uh, I I can't afford Jersey anymore. The taxes is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I got a great yard. Look at that yard! Holy shit! And then you just got woods behind you. Yeah, I own all that. Wow, that's so nice. Love my deck. I got an awesome deck. You got a basement? I do. Oh. You want to see? That's let's the go. thing you don't. Yeah, let's go check it out. That's the thing that I miss the most about the East Coast. The L.A., literally nobody has a. I don't know one person that has a basement in L.A. I don't know why they didn't build them. It's the so place. I bought this 21 years ago. Wow. For, for 500. Nice. Um, all right, so here's the basement. My door is going to be added to. Hi, uh... Hey, say hello to Greg. Who's Greg? Greg Fitzsimmons, very funny comedian. Hi. hi. How old are you? I'm uh, 16. Oh, I have a 17 year old version of you. <laughs> <laughs> she's, uh, she's enjoying, I know you don't like the quarantine. My daughter loves it. She loves sitting in a room doing nothing. But it I liked like... it until I was like getting depressed. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. see your friends at all? Like, do you have social distance like uh, hangouts? Um, yeah, but like, I have to quarantine now. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's only quarantines as she's sick. Before she was sick, she was tearing it up. Yeah. We definitely are not good quarantiners. Right. We've been we've been hanging out. Let's we've... not let's not spread that. Well, it's not like we're at block parties, but we've been having gatherings and everything. Yeah, right. Oh, I love and then, the uh, man, look at you working out down there. I wish oh, I was there. the screening room. What are you kidding me? Jim, you can't leave this out. I'll send you the tax money. You got to keep that house. <laughs> no, I'm done with it. I don't, I don't need that. You know that I used to use all the time, all yeah. the time. I haven't used that thing in five, six years. I just, I'm, are you serious? Yeah, I just. 
Done. You just watch TV on the couch upstairs. You know what I want? I don't even watch TV. I couldn't tell you one TV program. I haven't watched them. I don't, I'm boring. I'm boring. What do you do? Uh, I, at, what do you do at night between like eight and 11? I've been looking at old footage. I used to film nonstop, my family on the road, blah, blah, blah. And I've been looking at all this footage. Part of me was thinking like, is it a cool concept to show old videos and then talk about on what, where I was at in life. Blah, blah, yeah, yeah. Is that boring? Am I becoming a, a, an old fart? I'm trying to figure out, I want a podcast. I don't have the time and energy. It's, I, I need to, I don't know. I I'm, I'm on the brink of a couple different things I really want to do. Yeah. But uh, it's always, my biggest problem is, as is consistency. Right. I run out of it's even with my hours. I'll do a different hour nonstop instead of that. I start with this, then yeah, I go yeah. to this, and then I go to this. And you have ADD. Well, well, ADD and it's also just passion. I don't want to do it. It's it's that I don't know if it's the the discipline of school, uh, like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing it again. Yeah. I'm going to do what I want. Right. You know, I, it could be that it could be just, uh, you know, once I don't fall, once I do something, I'm done with it. I get rid of, that's why it drives me nuts. Like you're really doing, uh, uh, Sunday live stuff. And I go, I, no, yeah. I, I was buried a long time ago. I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I'm at that point where I want to, I want to hit it hard for like the next five, six years. Yeah. And become that guy. We're like, Greg, why'd you come to Florida? Come to my house. Yeah. We go, we go, we take a canoe and we go canoe the Island. I bring a six pack and we hang out. And then rent a boat if you want to go fishing. Yeah. I want to be that guy. I want to be, I want to be on the beach in the morning before anyone else is up. Yeah. I, I, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Ready. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. There's, there's things I'm really excited to do still. And, uh, and I, got another, I got another TV show I want to sell. I'm out pitching right now. And then I want to get the hell out of L.A. I've, I've you know, look, we live in Venice Beach. So when people talk about living in LA, it sucks. Venice beach is fucking great. I am the yeah. guy at the beach in the morning. Yesterday yeah. I was at the beach playing paddle tennis. And then <sighs> I go play beach volleyball on Sundays. Uh, I know all my neighbors, we got poker nights. We got, you know, right. we do shit together. I don't get in my car on the weekends. I just walk around. <clears throat> and I see people. And so it's not a bad deal. I'm not, I'm not one of these people that's bad mouthing. Everyone's leaving LA, man. You know, it's like, uh, you know, Rogan left and that caused a bunch of people to go to Austin. And then you got, you got Joey Diaz. You ever see Joey Diaz in Jersey? I, I don't see him seeing, but I know he, he came here. He does his podcast. I, Dude, you got to hang with him. He's the fucking greatest guy. I got to call him because I, I follow his Instagram. Yeah. And I always watch his little podcast things. So I, yeah. Oh, this guy's hilarious. He I didn't know he was hilarious. Jersey. Yeah. Did you, did you know him when he was in New York? I don't. I didn't. You and I were in New York around the same time. I didn't know him either. I didn't know him until L.A. Yeah, we were ninety. I was ninety-one when I moved back to New York, or ninety-two, okay. maybe. Yeah, ninety-two because I got married in ninety-three. I got married a year later. Okay. He. I don't think he was in New York very much, but anyway, you guys are peas in a pod. You would really enjoy hanging out with each other i could see that i'm gonna have to reach out to him yeah 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 and he need does he have guests yeah 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 go on his show okay go tear it up i'm gonna make an introduction i'm gonna email both of you guys on a on a on a cc right after this podcast great. yeah all right and, great. Then I, and then i'm gonna kick back with some popcorn and watch that fucking podcast with you guys <laughs> yeah he's a beast you're both beasts um all right let's get back to the game uh Africa by Toto. I, I not a you, fan. You change the channel or do you turn up the windows or do change. you leave it on? You change, change. Come on Eileen by Dexy's midnight runners. Interesting. 
I, I think it makes it about 30 seconds in, I change. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. You go, it comes on and it grabs you. It's got, it's got a great opening and you go, they're Irish, they're having fun. And then 30 seconds in, you go, nah. Nah, I heard it's it. too long a wait for the ending. Come on. Do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever he's saying. <laughs> that was the only part of that that I liked. So yeah. it's like, I, I, I wait too long for that part. So I always end up changing it. Yeah, that sort of chanting, drinking song feel like, like Mumford and Sons does that a lot. And you go, I'm into this. And then you go, no, no, no. I don't want to sit in a pub. I don't want to sit in a pub with a fucking pint and sing with a bunch of Andy, <laughs> sing with a bunch of uh, fucking Andy Cap looking guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Baby got back by Sir Mix a Lot. Oh, um... depends on the time of the day, doesn't it? Depends who's in the car. Yep. Oh, I'm alone, so. I think I roll the windows up or what was the other one? Either leave it, turn it off or crank leave it and it. roll the windows up. Just leave, leave it. it. Just leave it. Leave it. Yeah. Okay. Leave it. Uh, Man Eater by Hall and Oates. Whoa, here she comes. Watch out, boy. I leave it. Yeah. All right. Here's one. I'm not feeling good about this one, but who knows? Mbop by Hanson. Oh, God, no. <laughs> um, all right, last thing, and then I'm going to let you go. You get, you get uh, hired, you're going to star in a buddy cop movie. It's always the white guy and his sidekick, the black guy. Black guy knows the streets, but you went to police academy. Together, you solve crimes. Uh, you get to pick your guy. Is it going to be J.B. Smoove, Craig Robinson, or Tracy Morgan? Ooh, you know what? I'm, mm, it's a tough one between – my. I initially went J.B. Smoove. Yeah. And in my head I said there would be no better better street guy than Tracy Morgan. Yep. Um. I feel if you're going to do Tracy, three, don't forget, it's going to be a trilogy. You better get along with this guy. Cause you're going to film with him for three movies. Uh, Tracy is, um, or was, I shouldn't say is, I would have to say, Wow, that's a tough one. Yeah. Because the, the reason my, my reason here is Tracy is probably the most street person I ever met. Tracy, I remember we'd be on uh, the Uptown Comedy Club. And that's that's when I first started becoming close with him. And he would just talk about like selling t- drugs and 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 being a scalper. And I thought he was all talk and yeah. And, and everyone around it. And then when we went to, then we were on SNL, we shared a room together. Again, he would say stuff. And part of me was like, what? Come on, man. He ain't really. And then I'll never forget. I had season tickets for the Mets. So we jump on the seven. I'm like, Tracy, let's get out of here. Let's just, let's, let's get out of this room and let's go. He's like, yeah, let's do that. And so we, we get on the seven train, went to Shea stadium. It was the Mike Piazza days. Yeah. Uh, was it Mike Piazza? It doesn't matter. It was like 97, 98, whatever was going on. And uh, we come off the train and we're walking. And also, you know, the guy, the, the scalp was come over like, yo, oh, yo, yo. I was like, I got to take like, train dog. He said, yo, what's up? And they're all start talking lingo. And, and then, uh, He's like, yeah, no, I'm on TV now. I'm on TV now. And they're like, come on, <laughs> seriously? Seriously, come on. And I'm listening to this conversation. And then we walked away. He's like, I told you, I used to be, I used to be street, man. I sold, I used to scalp Yankee tickets. I'm like, you really are a street guy. Yeah. Like, he's full. So, 
And I always said, I remember being in a car with Tracy when we were struggling at SNL and he was struggling at SNL. And I said, Tracy, they want when the minute you become the way Eddie Murphy was, people loved Eddie because he was street and raw. That's why everyone loved him. Yeah. Because he had to, what you say? Not because, because he brought the street. Yeah. Right. I go, they don't allow you to bring the street. You need to start bringing the street because I'm telling he would imitate harassing Lorne Michaels. Greg, I couldn't, I couldn't breathe. I would laugh so hard. I'm like, uh, why don't you just, do if I write this as a sketch, we was like, I'm ready, I'm ready. And I saw years later, he did it, where he would just get in the elevator, but he would imitate it. Like when his sketches get cut, uh -huh. he would come to my room and go, uh, the next time I'm on the, in the elevator long, I look at him and go, you know, I know where you live. <laughs> And just leave. No, it did. It's so funny. He's like, why is it funny? Because it's so menacing and it's yeah. street. It's real. Yeah. It's real. Yeah. And it's um, what everybody wants to do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, if Tracy was extremely disciplined and able to be as street as he wants, I'd have to go Tracy only because I think he would knock that so far out of the park. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. JB though is. JB can improv like nobody's business, man. You, I've you never see. And that's the other thing. It's like, he is such a great improver. Yeah. Uh, he's street too, man. He's Mount Vernon. He is street. I, I'm going to have to say Tracy has the more street. Like I would watch, I watched JB with the do rag yeah. on Kirby enthusiasm. Yeah. He still has, he is such a kind soul. And I'm not saying Tracy doesn't, he is such a kind soul. It bleeds through him. Uh -huh. And I don't know if I'm, I don't, I, I know him before all that too much where I'm like, eh, I don't buy that you have a mean, I don't, I don't, be, I don't believe that you can hurt somebody. Uh-huh. Yeah. With Tracy, I can believe I just shoot him. Yeah. <laughs> there is, I, I, I've told this story a billion times. Uh, I might've told it on Stern, but there was, a, <laughs> there was a time where, uh, Will Fowl would come in and he'd, and he'd always dress as a character. It was a little annoying and funny at the same time because he wouldn't dress you as Will. <laughs> Do you hear the cat? <laughs> Do you hear the cat? He's saying, why? Why am I still alive? And I can't yell, and I can't yell at him because he can't hear me. Yeah. Why? You can't even make this up. You can't even make this up. And then my daughter's downstairs going, why? <laughs> why? It's like the scream, the painting, the scream, but it's a cat. What, Dory? We should get a shot color from him. And see, I told my wife, maybe he's trying to put him down. She's like, that's cruel. I go, what's more cruel? Shoving right. pills down his throat? Yeah. Or right. coming down. She squeezes, she comes down in the middle of the night because she's sleep deprived. And he does that and she takes his head. She's like, no, I'm like, hun. Yeah. Wait. All right. I'm like, anyway. So Will does his character, it was before, he, he named everything Ron Burgundy. So he comes off the elevator and he's got, and he commits, he wears the outfit. He's got these yellow glasses and he's dressed very metrosexual and he's being very flamboyant. And he's, he's, he's saying he's a painter. And he comes up to me, Colin Quinn and Tracy. And, he's, and he basically insults us through the character. He's like, you know, you three, you know, did classless and this and that. And he goes, you need to be like Ron. Ron, you know, changed the world to paint him. He had a scarf on and uh, his, he had these tight pastel green pants. <laughs> so he's dressed. <laughs> yeah. So he, he, he goes to his office and Colin goes, you know what? You know, he, that was some LA, 
that's some LA shit he just did, you know. He really means that shit. He really fucking means it. He goes, if he wants to play, if he wants to play little games, let's play games with him. We'll play. We'll, if he thinks with thugs, let's act like fucking thugs and we'll beat him and rape him tonight. And I went, oh my God, that's a, that's a great idea. He's like, bro, you, you got to get him out of his room. So, and I used to tell the story and people, I would get, I would get people go like, I don't like the fact that you try to make rape funny. And like, it's, I so I stopped telling the story. So I lure it's children at play. I go to Will's office at like three in the morning. I go, uh, Hey Ron, I go, uh, me, Colin and Tracy want to change our lives. We want to learn about paint. Why don't you come to our room? And he, and he <laughs> goes, he's like typing. He looks at me. And he stands up. He's full blown character. Yeah. Three in the fucking morning. He comes walking up to me and he goes, I sense juvenile behavior. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying not to laugh. He comes into the office. Colin tackles him, <laughs> throws him into the couch, and he sits on his face and he pretends he's. Okay. Then he's screaming at me, pull his pants down, pull his pants down. <laughs> so I'm pulling his pants down and I'm pretending. <laughs> and the whole time, you know, he has glasses, so they're all twisted. Yeah. And he's going, good God, in the name of Pastel Green, why is this happening? Right, so I'm trying not to belly laugh. Yeah. It's so it's the best for a part. Dirt nap. Yeah. Pick it, pick him up and bring him a step. Thank you. So when I talk about this on stage, everyone thinks it's a it's a it's a bit. It's not a bit. I'm just doing therapy. But the best part, Greg, I'll never forget this image. I look to see where Tracy is because he's not participating. Yeah. He's in the doorway with a dangling unlit cigarette like this, right? There you he's, he's going, hurry up and save me some of that. <laughs> and I, let, I just cannot believe he was so locked in. I thought he quit the game. Oh, he's the closer. He's the closer, man. He's, he's the closer. Man. And it was that it was that simple. Yeah. It was that and he's and he's looking down the alleyway. He's yeah. looking. I've never and we That's and we repeatedly great. did yes. Yeah. And it became and, and a whole Will, and Will Ferrell stayed in character the whole time. Would not break character. Oh to the my point God. where to the point where we repeatedly did it all night long. <laughs> <laughs> and we would we'd go in his office and we'd take his chair and then other cast members started joining as different characters uh -huh. and i remember sherry o'terry was like oh my god someone get the authorities and then um <laughs> i think katan would be like all right what's going on here and then we'd start taking him we'd beat him up take his gun and smash his head um and then the the night ended with us pulling, putting him in one of those, um, the, those garbage, the big gray bins, yeah. the garbage bin, like when people come through the hallway, we put him in the garbage bin and we put him in the stock elevator and we sent him to the ground floor. It was just so, <laughs> I swear to God, I swear to God. So it's a long about, it's a long way to say, I think I would go with Tracy. I love it. I love it. Jim Brewer, you know how to close out a podcast, my friend. Thanks for having me, man. You're, right. It's always good hearing from you. Yeah, you too, man. I wish I was on the East Coast and we could see each other more. Um, you got any dates you want to plug coming up? Tour dates? Oh, my God. I'm, I'm out of here starting February 4th. I go from uh, – it's called the 
the gym needs to survive mode. Uh-huh. Uh or or Jim's in over his head from maybe a purchase I just made in Florida that I really can't afford. Oh uh, no shit. There we go. All right, I'm gonna read out some dates you got coming up. We Zanies, got- February 4th. I got Funny Bone, Columbus, Ohio. I got Cincinnati, Funny Bone. It's all comedy clubs. I'm going Chicago, uh, Schaumburg. Yeah, March 12th. love that room. Then you got Antonio, Texas. You got Houston, Texas. You got Grand Junction, Colorado. Cheyenne, Wyoming. That sounds Never been. fun. That sounds yeah. awesome. Uh, Miami. All these dates are available at jimbrewer.com. B-R-E-U-E-R.com. Um, all right, brother, say hi to your wife for me. And uh, great talking to you. You're the best. Great talking to you. I know I'm going to hear, I'm going to get image, I'm going to get messages. Some are going to go, love the story. And then some are going to go, where are you mess? There's people like you that are killing people. <laughs> assholes. That's so, so right. All of you, do yourself a favor. Just spare it. I'm just going to delete you. Yeah. Stay off Reddit. That's what I yes. do. I never right, go man. on that shit. All right. I'll talk Take to care, you Take care, brother. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.